Hello and welcome everyone. Let's understand the very basic term in order to understand the indexing better. This term is utilized everywhere and it's very important for the calculation purpose, for the understanding purpose that how the data is actually stored, how the blocks are involved in storing a file. The term is blocking factor. Nothing but then the number of records a block can store into it is known as a blocking factor. The number of records that can be stored in a single block is called as blocking factor. So understand multiple things here. One thing in a single block involves block size. Each block size is same in a disk. So there will be a uniform size of the block and the entire disk will be divided into equal size blocks. So whatever number of blocks, uh, whatever number of records will be stored in one block, the equal number of records can be stored in another block. But it is dependent on the record size. If you are talking about two files, then two files can have two different size of record. If you are talking about a single file, then of course all its records should have the same size. Should have. It can be different size also, but we are talking to make it simple, same size. So. For a file, whatever number of records are there, how many blocks are needed to store this particular file could be easily find out by finding out the blocking factor. So blocking factor would let you know that how many blocks are required to store a particular file in the secondary memory. Now based on number of blocks required, we will find out what is the number of blocks to be accessed. So this particular value gets involved everywhere. In fact, when you are going to understand about the indexing, you will see that how each record in the index file is taken from one block of the file in the data file. So based on number of blocks, the number of records will be present here. And again, the blocking factor will be different for the data file. The blocking factor will be different for the index file. Because here the blocking factor is actually dependent on what? two values. One is a block size which is going to be constantly same for all the blocks of a disk. The variation would come from the record size. The record size will be different for each and every file. For data file something, for index file of the same data file something, for another data file something else, for the index file of that data file something else. It could be something for the cluster index file, it could be different for the primary index file based on the field that you are choosing, right? So that makes up the difference in the blocking factor. Now how to calculate the blocking factor? Very simple. Whatever is the size of the block, how many records you can place? So what makes the blocking factor? The block size, whatever is the size of a block divided by the record size. How many records can be placed in this block would be dependent on its record size. So I would just simply divide the block size by the record size. So here come and you must consider one important fact here that I have taken the floor function here. Why floor function while we are taking the blocking factor? Because we are considering unspanned organization. Unspanned organization means we are storing the complete record in a block. We are not dividing a record across the blocks. Okay. That's why we are taking the flow. Suppose a block is capable of containing 5.5 records. So I'm not going to consider that a half record. I'm going to consider only 5 because I want to know the number of records which can be completely present in a block. Okay, that half I will not put here. That complete 6th record I'll put in the next block. And that is exactly why we have taken this flow function. The next term we need to understand here is spanned record and the unspanned record. What do I mean by this? And this exactly this particular term I had used while talking about the blocking factor also. So here you see, uh, suppose we have two blocks B1 and B2. So let me explain both of them one by one. So spanned record at the very first, so I'm talking about this first. So I have record 1, record 2, so here record 1, record 2, record 3. The leftover space, what I have here, is not capable of storing the entire record 4. Some part of record 4 is stored here, part of record 4. 
and some part of it is stored on the next block okay so record 4 is actually stored across two blocks not only in one block such a record is known as span record understand once again jahan par humne ek record ko tod diya aur do block mein store kar diya wo ho gaya span it is span across the blocks okay so here uh, record number 4 is nothing but in the span record now what becomes unspanned so i am storing r1 I am storing R2 and I am storing R3. Now whatever is the leftover space is going waste. I am not going to make use of it. Let it go waste. The record 4 is freshly going to be stored completely on the block number 2. So such a record is known as unspanned record. You are not spanning it. You are storing it at one place completely. You are not going to divide it into across places. And then whenever you have to look for it, you have to store the two pointers along with this record 4 here. That it is in block 1 as well as block 2. Okay. And you also you have to mention the starting and the ending position. Correct. So such, a, such one becomes the span and such one becomes the unspan of course you would say that in case of span we are wasting space so this is a little bit of internal fragmentation that will happen okay in the unspanned one here we are not having any fragmentation we are making use of each and every byte of a block but it becomes difficult when it comes to access it okay you need to store multiple information so that was a simple and so i said here that the block size is taken in the flow because we are considering the unspanned organization almost always. So while you will be making calculation, you will take the flow function, you will ignore that point xy factor of a record to get stored in the block because you will say that point xy will go in the fresh block only. Correct? So this makes up the basic understanding of few terms. I will come in the next video to make you understand the sparse and the dense index.